Welcome back to the Toffee Blues, your source for all things Everton. I am Connor Williams and we're back with another one of our 24-7 news report videos. Um, this one's a little bit thinner on the ground because not much news, but there is still a good amount for you. So we'll kick it off with the headline news as we always do. And it's that Everton are interested in signing Chelsea midfielder Ruben Loftus-Cheek. There's also interest from Roma and West Ham. And that's come via the Daily Mail. Um, to be honest, this is a player that I think, I don't know if he's definitely been linked with us a couple of times, but he's a player that a lot of fans have been asking for for a while. Um, myself included when he was a little bit younger, um, certainly then. As he's getting a bit older, though, I'm, uh, I'm not as convinced. I'm, I'm currently, at the time of speaking, trying to get some stats up for him and give us a bit more of an insight. Um, obviously, he's been getting some games this season. I watched I watched him against um, Crystal Palace um, in the Cup recently, in the FA Cup uh, semi-finals. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. It, the, the thing that puts me off, obviously, he's very good. He's got a physical sort of... Um, his physicality is quite good. He's got a good build. Uh, he's strong on the ball. Um, and he's had a lot of... Obviously, people are saying he's a box-to-box. -box. He's had a lot of people compliment him over time. Glenn Hoddle used to say he reminds him of Michael Ballack. Um, Jose Mourinho said that he was brilliant um, when he was a bit younger. Um, he's, he's, he's had his fair share of um, praise. He can also play a lot of positions. I've seen him being played at midfield, um, defensively, centre-mid, cam striker so he is very versatile in his play style i think he probably is better off uh, as a box-to-box -box midfielder uh, how much this would cost us would be hard to tell um transfer market reckon he's worth 18 million obviously they're not they don't know how much chelsea value him at chelsea might want to get more money off us for that so you know it's it's a bit how much is he worth um, but looking at his stats this season, he's played 17 games, got two assists. Uh, he's played four in the FA Cup, got one goal, one assist. Eight in the Champions League, got one assist. Um, and in the Carabao, he made three and didn't get an awful uh, lot in that in terms of goals or assists. Um, I will get up his, uh, a bit more of his stats, a bit more in depth. We'll go from his Premier League, um, just because that's a wider spread um, of talent. Um, but don't get me wrong, he's played 954 minutes. So he's had, he's had a couple of games. Uh, he's got a couple of minutes. He's played nine of the games from centre uh, defensive mid. And then he's played four from centre mid, a little bit further up. And he's had one from attacking mid. And he's even played two games at right mid, according to transfer market, which is very good. He normally plays, uh, he's played a couple of the games he's played. He's played a large amount. I think it was against Man City, play, only played 14. But other than that, he's played a couple of 90-minute games. He obviously had coronavirus as well, which kept him out for a little bit. Um, but it don't, and don't get me wrong, I'm not knocking him. I think he's someone we'll definitely need in our squad. We're after another centre mid. Don't think we're after what exactly what he is. I think we could do with getting a proper defensive midfielder. Um, when you think about like the Ndidis of the world, somebody who's just going to sit behind uh, in front of that defence and just help them out as much as possible. I think we need one of them. He's much more your Donny van der Beek, uh, which if van der Beek doesn't come to us, I could see why we'd get him then. But he's much more of your decore type, where he will shuttle it up and down that pitch. Uh, he will offer some defensive support, but more importantly, something that an Ndidi doesn't do, is he will go up the other end of the pitch and provide you with some goals, some assists, some key passes, stuff like that. Um, so in terms of is he needed yes is he a maximum priority uh, no I think we've got players that are similar to him um, and, but the biggest one for me guys is it depends on the money and his consistency uh, it's sometimes I watch him for Chelsea and I think oh god yeah he's a really good footballer other times I watch him and I think hmm, he's, he's you know he performed a lot better the other week I don't know what's happened Um but we'll have to keep our eyes out on this one. It depends on what Chelsea do. Obviously, they've got Gallagher coming back as well. 
from loan from Palace unless they sell him. So it'd be interesting. Um, we've got some injury news as well. This is good to see. Uh, it's all it's all good in the injury department. This news. Yeri Mina and Donny van der Beek are both fit and available for tomorrow's game against Leicester City. Frank Lampard does mention, um, I think it's Yeri Mina and van der Beek, who I will get into in a minute. We've got some quotes from Lampard as well to get through, uh, which will be good. But it'll be nice to see Yeri Mina back. Uh, Lampard, like I said, I don't want to spoil him, but Lampard basically says he's not going to rush him back. It's about managing him. He's been out for a while. And he says van der Beek's had a baby, so there's no... They might not definitely start tomorrow. They might not even play, but they are in the match day squad. Good to see Yeri Mina back. I hope we manage his injury uh, a lot better. I've got shades of when he came back. Benitez rushed him in and he got injured again. Um, he's one of those players, like I said uh, in numerous videos, he's one of my favourite players. I think he's one of our best centre-backs. His body's his biggest enemy and you've got to work with him. And that's what the, um, the medical staff that the club are paid to do is work with him and his body to get him up to the best. Um, so we'll have to wait and see um, how long that lasts. Um, we've also got the news that Ayosi uh, Perez has said that Everton are a threat. He's been speaking to Leicester City Football um, Club TV and he's been saying it's going to be important. They're fighting relegation, so that means it's not going to be easy. Um, they're going to be pushing. We need to make sure we are aware of that. We are ready. We'll work on what we can to bring from us. And from that, we just need to play our game and do our game plan. Sometimes you might not play your best, but at the end of the day, what's more important if you're able to pick up points in those situations? Um, but obviously, I'd, I'd be more shocked if Iosi Perez said, oh, they're at relegation, we'll walk them. Um, I don't think he was ever going to say that. But it looks like they're very much aware that we are fighting and every game is a fight for us. And they're going to have to do their best to combat that, obviously, with the Goodison uh, crowd atmosphere as well they're going to have to be really careful um, because I think we're going to have a really intense game of football similar to the United game at Goodison Park um, uh, but yeah we've also got this Alan St Maxim has um, sort of addressed his future there's a number of clubs that were interested in him Everton included and he said to be honest every year people are going to think I'm leaving and finally I stay I stay because I love the club the supporters see what's happening what is best for my future at this time I want to be focused and after the season I will decide what to do and um, I think he's right I think he's going to be linked away with there for the rest well up until then money starts providing them trophies then he'd stay but at the minute there's teams there might be teams that he thinks he could go to who are more likely to win trophies before then um, now that they've got money though and they're the richest club in English football um, I don't think it's so much of a given that players are going to jump ship as easily as that. Uh, it'll be very interesting. Um, we have also got some some quotes from Lampard. He did his presser today. Um, I won't read the whole presser to you. You can go check that out on numerous places, including the Everton website. I'll just um, read a couple that are interesting. Um, Lampard mentioned the mood in camp. He said it's fantastic. Everyone's at the, you know is happy. He said it wasn't the best home performance, so there were good things for us to analyse. The lads are working well. Um, he did, like I said, he mentioned Yeri Mina. He said it's about managing that, um, about managing him because he's been out for a while, um, which I think nobody will disagree with. He also mentioned Dominic Calvert-Lewin, who's been a big talking point recently. He said individually he's a big player who's had injuries this season, but the most important thing at the moment in this team, in the forward areas, we have options. Collectively, it's about uh, about the team as a whole and everybody's pushing and striving to help. Um he obviously goes on to say Man United's win was great. It really helps. The mood's been lifted. Um, and then he goes on to talk about Leicester, how we need to respect them. They're a good team. Donny van der Beek, he says he's back in contention. Yeah, he was not well for a period. He had an injury. He had a baby girl last week, but he's back in the squad, which is good to hear. Uh, I don't know if Donny van der Beek immediately gets in anyway, because I think um, Awobi's actually put a stake to staying in the squad. Um, interestingly as well, he was also asked about Sean Deitch uh, and Burnley. He said, nobody knows what might have affected it. He's been an incredible manager for the club. I'm sure he'll get a fantastic job because of the level of manager, of manager he's shown to be. It doesn't affect Everton, he said. I saw a quote saying we were left off the hook. I don't see how. Um, I, I, I can get where he's coming from in terms of he doesn't want, um, I think it's more a competitive thing of, I don't think he wants people to say, oh, yeah, but you were let off the hook if he's a, if him and the squad have earned it. 
personally, I do think we have been let off the hook, depending on who they get in, but I think we've been let off the hook slightly um, to a degree. Um, but saying that, Burnley haven't been good for a while and it looked like Deitch had gone a little bit, I don't know, mate, not stale, but it looked like things weren't clicking. It heavily depends on who they get in. If they got in somebody who can sort of have an immediate effect, grind out results, we're in trouble and work with that squad. But if they get somebody in who's a complete change of pace, change of style, and it just and it's going to be one of those we need to rebuild type of things, I think we will be off the hook. There's, I can't see somebody coming in with a ticky tack of mindset going to Burnley and have an immediate effect there. If they get someone like an Allardyce who's known to play the four four two and be quite robust in it, maybe then um, it's a little bit more of a worry. But uh, yeah, there were other quotes from Lampard, but they're just the main ones I thought that you'd want to hear. Um, you can again, like I said, you can go check those out at the Everton website, or there's uh, numerous journalists from the Echo that are tweeting them out live. Adam Jones, for example. Uh, but that is all we've got time for today. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the comment, and um, subscribe to the channel. Sorry, and comment down below anything I've discussed in today's video. Would you take Ruben Loftus Cheek? I'm interested to hear opinions about that. It's, it's a player that many fans have been wanting for a while. And um, how good is it to see Yeri Mina back and Donny Van der Beek? Um, and let us know what your thoughts are on the game coming up and your predicted scores. And most importantly, guys, stay safe. I will see you very soon.